Hello friends, today I'm going to take you on a walking tour of Seldovia, Alaska. But before we start the walking tour, I needed to give you a little bit of a backstory about where Seldovia is and why we're in Seldovia so that you can have a better understanding. Seldovia is a hidden gem of Alaska. Our family has a cabin there, so we have many videos of our family spending time at the Seldovia cabin. To get to Seldovia from Anchorage, you have a few options. Option number one is to hop in your car and make the four to six hour drive, depending on weather, depending on summer traffic and construction, and how many times you wanna to stop to gawk at the beautiful views. I make this drive multiple times a summer, and it usually takes Bennett and me about five hours to make the drive from Anchorage, around the Turnigan Arm, down through Turnigan Pass, along the Kenai Peninsula to Homer, Alaska. Homer is the end of the road. Then you either have to hop on a small airplane or a ferry boat to get across to Seldovia. Seldovia is not an island. It is actually connected to the mainland, but the road ends in Homer, so you have to find another way to get across. The other option which my husband uses is to fly to Seldovia. He has a small airplane that he flies from Anchorage to Seldovia in about an hour and 45 minutes, landing at the small Seldovia airport. So now that you know what it takes to get to Seldovia, we can begin our walking tour and I hope that you enjoy getting a little glimpse into what Seldovia looks like today, as well as a glimpse into what Seldovia of the past may have looked like. The boys dropped me off in the town of Seldovia because I want to talk about the history of Seldovia as well as what is here right now because I realize I haven't ever really given you a tour of town. So back in the 1740s, Seldovia became a hub for Russian fur traders. They came for the sea otter pelts and that became a big thing here. So Seldovia village really dates back to the 1700s, which is amazing. And of course, if you go before that, you have the Alaska Native people that used Seldovia as fishing grounds and hunting grounds, so it goes back even further than that. Our first stop here in town today is the Seldovia Fuel. This is the one gas station, but you can also pull up to it and fuel your boat up and pay for it down on the water so, so you can fuel up your boat or your car and we also leave our propane here to get refilled we just have an account we leave our propane behind we come back the next time and it's refilled so it's a nice system right now gas is currently 677 a gallon or 687 for diesel so that's the first stop on our tour is the gas station here is mermaid park with a little mermaid in a bathtub so next up came the Russian Orthodox missionaries that came to settle in Seldovia, and they had a huge influence over the Aleut people. In the research that I did, it said that they did show a lot of respect for the Aleut people. They learned their language and their customs and integrated that into the Orthodox faith. So they had a lot of influence over the people here, and there is still a Russian Orthodox church up on the hill. We will stop there next. Like I said, the Orthodox missionaries learned the Aleut language and, and they also helped the people create a written record of their language, which is really helpful in keeping traditions alive. So this is the St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Church, built in 1891. It's amazing to see these old pictures to see how people lived back then. So this church is up on a hill and has a beautiful view out over the bay. So as the Orthodox religion was blended with the Aleut values, it seems like that became kind of the cornerstone of the community. The community centered their lives around their faith and their holiday festivities. And these crows up here are very loud. So let's go back down and we'll keep showing you Soldovia. Oh wow, look at all these mushrooms. They're beautiful, but they are very poisonous. So in the 1920s, people began to breed foxes on different islands here in Alaska to be able to get them for fur because the animals that naturally had fur were declining until the Great Depression hit and nobody was buying furs anymore. That was one of the livelihoods for people around this area. So you've probably heard of the Alaskan Gold Rush and Soldovia was one of the only ports that was open 
through the winter. And so many people that were coming up to Alaska on steamships came through Soldovia, which is pretty amazing. So some of them stuck around because of the industry that was here that I'll tell you about in a second. Others briefly came through and used this as their starting point to go find gold elsewhere. All right, I would say that we are now getting into the main drag of Soldovia. We have several stores here. We have several restaurants. We have several places to stay. So the first one here is the Soldovia liquor store. I honestly can't tell you how many different things that building has been over the years, but right now it is the Soldovia liquor store. And then next up we have the Soldovia Harbor Inn. Across the street here is one of my favorite little parks. This is called Central Park. Each fall, Soldovia hosts a chainsaw carving competition. And so these chainsaw carvers from all over Alaska come and compete. And so then you see these beautiful carvings all over town, but they also put many of them here in this park. So we have this awesome bench. I have to say this one is my absolute favorite. It is a salmon with a saddle on it. This one here was built the year that Hunter was born. He was born in January. We brought him here when he was, you know, six months old. Had a picture of him on this when it was freshly carved. And so now it's one of our family traditions to take a picture on it every summer to see how much the boys have grown. And it's so fun to look back. So this one is one of our personal favorites. We have a sea lion mama with a baby sea lion and a sea otter on its back. I'm sure we'll see more as we go throughout town and I can show you those too. So in the 1920s, they found that there was an abundant amount of herring in this area and it attracted tons of people up to this area all the way from California and the Pacific Northwest and they needed to have salteries for these herring fish and so two big canneries were built here in Soldovia and even some sailing ships were converted to floating salteries because they needed to process the herring. So that brought in a lot of new people, a lot of Scottish people, a lot of Scandinavian people to work in the cannery salting the fish. Unfortunately, over time, they were discarding so much salted fish into the water, it was killing the vegetation. And by the 1930s, it was all over. There were no more herring and the herring industry completely closed down. So that from the 1920s to the 1930s, that was a big part of life here. And then it was completely gone. All right, across the street here, we have Jack and Ava's restaurant. Oh, they have a couple of cool carvings over there too. This is a great place to come to eat. They have good bakery items as well as food. They got a big mosquito carving here, which is incredible. And then a beautiful sled dog. And a nice moose antler rack too. Next up here we have the Crab Pot Grocery Store. I have showed you guys that grocery store before. This is the longest running grocery store in the town of Soldovia. It's been here for years. They do an awesome job of providing food. I was talking to a local the other day and she said that during the pandemic, she started ordering her groceries from Save You More over in Homer and getting it flown over just so that she wouldn't have to go shopping. And so a lot of the people that live here, they do order groceries and have them flown over and that can save them some money. Hey, I know these handsome boys. Hi. You must be sweaty in that jacket. Next up, we have the post office and we have the Linwood Bar. And we have another really cool carving of a miner. I had to get a cold soda to cool off. I'm hot walking through town. I probably need to take off my sweatshirt too. Back to the history of Soldovia. Thankfully, the herring canneries were not the only canneries that were set up. They decided to diversify their canneries and they had canneries for shrimp and crab and halibut and salmon here in Soldovia. Starting in around 1910, all the way to the 1964 earthquake, which unfortunately brought an end to canneries in Soldovia. We'll talk a little bit more about how the 1964 earthquake affected Soldovia in just a minute, but for right now, I'm going to show you this beautiful view of the harbor because the sun is shining and the water is glistening and they have a beautiful harbor here in Soldovia. While canneries provided the biggest boom to the economy here in Soldovia, 
there were also periods of coal mining and logging that happened here and those things kind of just ebbed and flowed with demand and prices for things and came and went over time coming from the main street i have another cool carving here of a crab and a sea otter and we here we have the Saldovia Public Library and the fire department. And if you continue on up that way, you get to the Susan B. English K through 12 school. They even have an indoor swimming pool here as a part of their Keeping Healthy Communities program. We've been swimming there a few times. Um, so they do have a K-12 school here in Saldovia, which is awesome. All right, back to the main drag. Next up, we have this Saldovia Outdoor Rentals, golf carts, bikes, waterfront B&B. &B very cute and have these little which is a newer thing but such a smart way to get around Soldovia because it's just not a very big place we have a cool fish over here at the Soldovia trading post actually never been in here but it says souvenirs jewelry mugs soap across from here we have the boardwalk hotel and pub and grill and we have the Asta Gallery here, and this is also a bed and breakfast on the back. Got lots of cute, fun things to look at. Here, right next to the Harbor Master, we have the Jack English Lollipop Park. Kids are having some fun there with Mark. And then we have the Harbor Master where they have flushing toilets that we always like to come frequent when we are in town. Across the street we have the Sea Parrot Inn which also says shower and laundry and it is also a, like a little ice cream coffee soup sandwich shop. So we have made it to the harbor parking lot. This is where we come in and out of the harbor. And now we're going to take a quick walk down to the old boardwalk. So Soldovia was originally built as a waterfront town. All of the houses, all of the businesses were built along the water and you could only get between them at low tide. During high tide, you were pretty much stuck wherever you were because the buildings were built right along the water. In the late 1920s, early 1930s, thanks to a community effort, they built a boardwalk that made it so you could go from one end of town to the other end of town, no matter the tide. So that was a big upgrade to the city of Soldovia in their early 1930s. Next up, I wanna show you this beautiful gateway pavilion built in 2014. This is one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. It's just so well made. It would be a shame not to stop here and show you this beautiful building where they hold farmers markets during the summer, Saturdays from 11 to 1. Everything in here is just so beautiful and smells so good and has a gorgeous view of the harbor. As we're talking about the history of Soldovia, look at this picture. Feels like a totally different world. If you've ever wondered how cars make it to Soldovia since there's no road here, we do have the state ferry. The Testamina comes several times a week and you can drive your car or your boat and your trailer onto the Testamina and drive it off at Soldovia. So I would never bring my car here for a short period of time, but people that live here, we keep a car here to be able to pull the boat in and out of the water. It can be really helpful and that's how you get it here. All right, we have made it to a piece of the historic boardwalk that we were just talking about. And this part of the boardwalk goes along the Soldovia Slough. So like I said, the boardwalk kind of changed life around here in Soldovia until the 1964 earthquake. It was the biggest earthquake on record in the United States at that point. And the earthquake caused subsequent tsunamis that really wrecked a lot of havoc, especially on coastal towns. Well, Soldovia thought that it had gotten by without much damage after the earthquake um, and the tsunami because just a few windows broke and a little bit of flooding, but they didn't think that much had happened until the fall hit. They realized that the city of Soldovia had dropped four feet. And when the storms came in the fall and the winter, every building, the boardwalk got destroyed, every building got flooded, and they realized that they really had been affected by the earthquake a lot more than they had realized. So after the 1964 earthquake, the town had to rebuild and it was over 10 years before it was really resettled here in Soldovia. They had to take a big mound out of town and create flat spots, higher ground, so that the town could be built and be safe from the tides that go up and down so extreme around here. So Soldovia has a very rich and long history for being such a small town there are no canneries left here because of the 1964 earthquake. So all of the things that kind of made it what it was once 
are no longer here. All right, so now we're gonna take a little walk down the historic boardwalk. There's some old buildings. This building says it's the Soldovia Rowing Club. This beautiful building is the time on the boardwalk. They sell plants and lots of goodies for gardens and souvenirs. And the lady that owns the time on the boardwalk also takes care of a lot of the flowers around town and she does such a beautiful job. But this place is just so whimsical and beautiful and right here on the, the Soldovia Slough. So this part is the gift shop and store and then this side is her house. Such a cool building. One of my favorite things is that she plants a lot of plants in old boots, old fishing wader boots and things like that and has them along the boardwalk. I just love the whimsy of it. Oh, these are cute too. just gorgeous here's another carving of a hermit crab and more boots wow those people have a gorgeous greenhouse so I'm actually not sure how many people actually live in Soldovia now. A lot of residents come in the summertime and leave in the winter. Other people live here year round. They, they do have a police chief that lives here in Soldovia. Like I said, they have the K-12 school. So there are residents, but I'm gonna have to look up the number. I will make sure to put the population of Soldovia in the video so that you guys can know because I'm just not sure. I don't wanna make up a number of how many people live here. All right, we've made our way around the historic boardwalk. I'm gonna show you the bridge and where the airport is in relation to everything else. Here's another gorgeous house that has a similar look to that one with the store in it. I just love the color of it with the black windows. All right, we've made it to the Saldovia Slough Bridge. This water fluctuates with the tide, so it goes up and down. That's why all the buildings are on stilts. And then, if I were to go another three quarters of a mile about down the road, you would get to the Seldovia Airport. That is where Mark lands. It's actually right there where those little buildings are. That is the Seldovia Airport. It is a small airport. It does not have a tower. You just call out on the radio and let other planes know you're around and you tell each other where you are and you use your eyes to find other planes and somebody's coming in to land, you stay off the runway and if you're about ready to take off, you call out your plane number and say, I'm taking off on runway at Soldovia and then other planes know not to land. So after the 1964 earthquake, like I said, it took over 10 years to rebuild the city of Soldovia and it was never again the hub that it once was. That moved to Homer, there was now a road all the way to Homer and so that became more of the hub in this area rather than Soldovia. So, very interesting history. There's one more building. I'm not sure it's going to be open. It has a little museum of the Soldovia native tribe. We'll see if it's open. So I didn't show you, but somewhere in town there is a small clinic. As far as my understanding goes, there is no resident doctor in Soldovia, but they have doctors that come over from Homer, at different intervals so that you can be seen at different times. Here is the Soldovia Village Tribe Visitor Center. They always have the most beautiful flowers out here. This is one of my favorite carvings. It's called First Breath. It's a mother humpback whale taking her baby up to the surface. Unfortunately, they are closed on Wednesday, so I cannot show you this museum. So, But if you're ever in Soldovia, they have a lot of cool artifacts in there and history of the Alaska Native people here in Soldovia. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this little tour of Soldovia. I'm sure there's things that I missed, but 
I just thought that you guys might want to know what's in town. I know my family is really ready to go, so that's our little tour of the city of Seldovia. <laughs> Soldovia holds such a special place in our hearts. We have made so many amazing, wonderful family memories there. We don't actually spend a ton of time in town, so that's why I decided to dedicate this video to doing a walking tour of the city. Thank you so much for the opportunity for pushing me to be a tourist right here in my own backyard and learning the history of the cities that I'm visiting because it has deepened my appreciation for this beautiful state that we live in. Thank you so much for being here. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with our family. We love you, we're grateful for you, and we'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life.